Chapter 7. This is the perfect retirement plan. With a Roth, you determine when you want to pay the taxes for what you put into the account. This is a benefit of the Roth that gets way too often overlooked. Remember, anything contributed to a Roth is with after-tax money. So if you choose the Roth, you pay tax now. If you choose the traditional, you pay tax later. It's up to you when you want to pay the tax. Now, you can also convert all or a portion of your traditional IRA, your 401k, 403b, TSP to a Roth. A conversion is simply moving money from a tax deferred account to the Roth. For instance, if you were to convert $50,000 from your traditional IRA to a Roth, that $50,000 will be taxable as ordinary income in the year in which you did it. There is no escaping that. You will pay tax on that converted amount. But again, you choose when. Now, let's play out a scenario to see how this may work. Sarah and Dan just retired. As a marketing executive, Sarah was making good money, $150,000 a year, with a $50,000 annual bonus. Dan was also making decent income as a sales consultant, $75,000 a year. So between them, they had $275,000 a year in gross income. Now, because their kids were no longer at home and the mortgage was paid off, the only deductions they had were deferring as much income as possible to the 401k plans. Last year, they were both able to defer the max of $22,000. Those deferrals, plus their two standard deductions, reduced their gross income by $68,000. They have earned income $225,000, a bonus of $250,000, so their gross income is $275,000. Subtract the $44,000 in 401k deferrals and the $24,000 in standard deductions, which means their taxable income is $207,000. Now, $207,000, they had to pay $38,259 in federal taxes, 14% roughly effective tax rate. 14% on a gross income of $275,000, that's not too shabby. Now, this is just the feds, by the way. We don't get involved in the state taxation. So by maximizing their deferrals, they were able to reduce their taxable income by 16%, which saved them $10,000. Now, if they don't do the deferrals and instead do that $44,000 went to the Roth 401k, this is what it's going to look like. They have earned income of $225,000, the bonus of fifty. dollars Again, their gross income is still $275,000. But now the only deductions they have are the standard deduction of $24,000, which means their taxable income is two fifty one. dollars Two fifty one dollars puts them at a $48,819 in taxes, roughly 18% effective tax rate. But you got to remember, there is a huge difference between deferring income, a la 401k contributions, and negating income, a la standard deductions. Deferring income simply means you don't pay tax on that income now, but you will at some point. Now, let's fast forward a few years, and we see that both Sarah and Dan have just retired. Sarah is 62, and Dan is 66. They're not taking Social Security yet, just living off the savings they're able to square away. They still have no mortgage, but they figure they spend about 50000 a year in total on everything. Vacations, bills, helping the kids out occasionally, etc. So they come to my office and they say, should they take Social Security now? They have accumulated $300,000 in their 401ks and they've rolled those over to IRAs. They also have $150,000 in savings accounts and they wonder again when they should take Social Security. They should not take it now. Absolutely not. Given they have no income other than the tiny amount of interest they're getting on their bank accounts, they, have, they pay no tax. None. And they will continue to pay no tax until they reach the age of 70 and a half when the required distributions kick in. What they should do is take advantage of that zero dollars in taxes and start moving money over to a Roth now. Any income they receive up to $25,300 is tax free. We get $25,300 because Sarah has a $12,000 standard deduction because she's under 65. And Dan's got a 13300 standard deduction because he's over 65. When your tax rates are low, convert to Ross. Now, let's say I'm able to convince them to convert 50000 this year. That 50000 again, will be taxable as ordinary income. But with their 25300 of standard deductions kicking in and the fact they have no other income, their taxable income will be all of 24700 they're only going to pay $2,583, $2,583 in taxes. 
That's a tiny, tiny, tiny price to pay for all the benefits of the Roth IRA. In fact, I'd even advocate they convert the full $100,000 to a Roth. Now, with a $100,000 conversion, their total tax will be $8,655. But for the benefit of having that $100,000 plus any growth completely tax-free forever, that's a small price to pay, in my opinion. Now, if they convert $100,000 each year, $100,000 in year one, $100,000 in year two, and then the remainder in year three of their IRAs, they'll have moved all of their money from to-be-taxed accounts to never-taxed-again accounts. And so in year four, when they've exhausted their cash savings, that's when they can both take Social Security. Dan will get his as a 69-year-old, meaning he'll have nearly maximized the delayed earnings credits and will enjoy a significant bump in his Social Security benefit. We'll just say Dan averaged 75000 a year over his career. His average index monthly earnings, AIME, will be $6,250. Now, how they figure out their AIME is pretty important. you got to understand this. Is What they do is they take your top 35 years of income, they index it for inflation, and then they add all those together. Then they divide that number by 420, that's, three, that's 35 years times 12, that's 420 months, and that gives you your AIME. Now, in Dan's case, his AIME is 6250 which means his PIA, his primary insurance amount, is going to be 2519 And just remember, your PIA is the amount that you get at your full retirement age. In this case, it's 66 for Dan. So if he waits to file for Social Security at 69 his benefit will actually be $3,173 because you take your PIA and times that by 8% each year that you delay filing for Social Security up until your age of 70. Now, I don't get a whole lot into this in this book, but I have a ton of videos on Social Security. Just go to youtube.com backslash heritage wealth planning. I tons and tons and tons. Now, if Sarah made the maximum under the Social Security rules at her full retirement age, her benefit would be roughly $2,800 a month. But because she's going to file at 65, which is a year before her FRA, her benefit will be reduced a little bit to only $2,600 a month. Now, following this strategy, Dan and Sarah are going to receive nearly $70,000 a year in Social Security benefits. $70,000. That's going to be more than enough to meet all their income needs of $50,000 a year, and it's going to be tax-free. If they need to dip into the Roth IRAs to augment their Social Security for whatever reason, they can do so and still pay no tax. It's a beautiful thing to behold. Their primary source of income is Social Security, which will be tax-free, augmented by tax-free Roth distributions. You just can't beat it. In fact, let's say Dan and Sarah live another 25 years or so. They will never pay income tax again, ever. Let that sink in paying roughly 8,303 years on the front end of the retirement to never pay income tax again. That's simply amazing. Now, can that work for you? Absolutely. Absolutely can. The beauty of this retirement cannot be overstated, yet very few people take advantage. Why? We've been taught incorrectly to defer taxes as long as possible. And I take huge issue with this philosophy. Again, if you can pay a small amount of tax today to avoid huge taxes in the future, you you absolutely need to do so. 